Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by LifeCham. So today we are very excited to be back here to do this webinar for you. And uh, this session is all about exchange trader bonds and so cool. Okay, so the title of the, for this Bursa webinar is ETBS, Importance of Bonds in Building a Balanced Portfolio. Now, may I, before we begin, right, may I ask our, our friends and the ladies and gentlemen here today uh, who are online today, uh, how many of you, of you here already have bonds in your portfolio? Uh, you may click the raise the hand button. Uh, if you already have bonds in your portfolio, you may click raise the hand button in the, uh, in the uh, uh, as one of the Zoom function. Uh. Let me see. Okay. Still not many, uh. looks like only less than 5% of you have bond in your portfolio, okay? Uh, thank you so much for showing your hands. You may put down your hands right now, okay? Now today, uh, so that our market here is bigger, so we can uh, tell you more about this ETBS because still so many of you here haven't got bond in your portfolio. And today our speaker here will talk about how important is bond to build a balanced portfolio, all right? So... Disclaimer, as usual, uh, whatever we share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. So in no way that we give any recommendation to buy or sell any securities presented in this webinar. So if you decide to make any investment decision, you are 100% responsible for all your investment uh, decisions, okay? Uh, allow me to briefly uh, introduce our speaker background. He's already here on the line with us. Uh, he is a financial blogger at Bear Bursa Facebook page. It is a certified financial planner from uh, Financial Planning Association of Malaysia. Uh, he is a former research analyst and a, prime, a premier banking in investment consultant. He also obtains a capital market services representative license uh, holder for the financial planning with expanded scope to advising on equities, debentures, or warrant listed on Bursa Malaysia. So he's none other than Anson Tan. Okay, Hello. Anson, welcome to our Bursa webinar. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Very happy to have you here on our uh, webinar today. So, yeah, I guess we all can't wait to learn from you about exchange traded bonds and Sukut. So, take it away. Okay, I will be more than happy to actually share with you all. Okay, just let me share my screen right now, all right? Give me a second. Okay, I guess all of you can see my screen right now. Yes, perfect. Okay, so perfect. Okay, let's start the webinar today. Okay, so the importance of bonds in a, in constructing a balanced portfolio. Okay, so basically the agenda today, I will actually go through with you all to let you all know what is bond, what is sukup, and sukup, okay? And what's the basic feature of a bond? Because I believe as the survey that we did just now by Shane, uh, by raising your hands, right? Okay, I can see most of you and don't actually have a, uh, bonds in your portfolio, okay? So we will actually dive deep into what is the basic features of bonds and what are the characteristics that as an investor, we need to understand, okay? When we are talking about bonds, uh, this kind of uh, asset classes, okay, that we want to put into our portfolio to diversify the overall portfolio risk, okay? Uh, the third part that I will actually share with you all, how can we actually start investing in, into bond in Malaysia, okay? What are the channels? What are the avenue that we can actually go and look for, okay? Bond investment ideas, all right? So without further ado, let's start. Okay, the first part, what are bonds and sukuk? Okay, here I will just give you guys an example, okay? So... What is a uh, bond? Okay, basically, uh, we need to know and understand from the corporate pers perspective. Okay, when the company, for example, here I'm using the Naga National as example. Okay, uh, as a listed company like the Naga National, okay, uh, they will definitely for most of the company, like I would say, even you are listed or unlisted, okay, you will actually have two channels for you to issue uh, securities. Okay, be it equity securities or debt securities to investor, okay? So basically you have two channels for you to raise funds, okay? It's either you sell your shares, okay? Through equity channels, like uh, you, you, you sell your shares to investor outside. So you list your uh, shares on the exchange or you just want to select a certain investor and sell it privately to them also can, okay? Then the other channel is 
the easier channel is you get fundings from bank or you sell bonds okay but all these things are actually you can classify them as issuance of debt okay so that it will contribute to your gearing ratio how many percent of the uh, your capital structure are actually coming from raising debts and how many percent you will for it uh of it you know, it's actually coming from the shareholders okay so you have two channels for you to get funds one is from the debt holders the other one is from the shareholders all right so of course we, we i guess all of you know well about equity now okay whereby as an investor if we are equity holder equity shareholder of a company we will only entitle to the dividend when the company management are declaring dividend okay at the top end so if they declare dividend then as a share uh, shareholder we will enjoy the dividend or the valuation of the company is actually uh low or is attractive and investor outside they would like to go to the open market in the exchange to buy the shares then there will be a capital appreciation for shareholders to actually enjoy okay this will make up part of the um part of the earnings okay if the share price do go up okay so capital appreciation and dividend income will definitely form the uh, earnings part for the equity shareholders okay but for debt holders right basically what the debt holders will get okay is only in fact like most of the time okay theoretically we will say is the interest of the debt that they borrow out okay they lend out to those uh to the company that need the funding to fund for their operation or any other matters like, all right so what are bonds okay so basically uh this flow chart i guess by looking at it it will make it very uh, easier very easy for us to straightforward understand what is bond okay so look just look at the first pointer first okay so as investors when we actually land and invest our funds uh, to uh issuers okay so you issue your uh you the issuers are the company okay where where by here the company actually issue a bond as an investor we buy their bond so if we invest the money to the company and the company are using our funds the second point okay the companies are actually using the fund to fund for some projects or some developments some construction developments it could be anything okay uh it, by it depends on the nature uh, the business nature of the company all right so if the projects generates income okay so it will actually uh pay the company can actually gain from the project generating income for them okay so once they get the cash flow they can actually utilize the cash flow to pay uh periodic uh interest most of the i would say most of the bond in in, in the market be it malaysia or, or overseas i would say close to 80 90 percent of the bond are fixed rate bond okay also so they will actually pay a pre-agreed okay the pre-determined or pre-agreed uh, periodic interest to the investor so as an investor for example if you are lending ten thousand out okay so what you get is actually the interest the coupon payment that has been promised to be repaid by the company okay so at the end of the bond or at the maturity what you will get back is definitely your principal plus the interest which is the coupon all right so it just like bank, uh, bank lending money to you at this juncture. We are the lender that is lending money to companies or entities. Okay, it can be government. Whereby some of you, you you may actually heard government bonds, corporate bonds. Uh, these are the differentiation. Any entity can actually uh, also can actually uh, issue bonds. What are so cool? Okay, actually, if we are talking looking at the cash flow perspective to if we are trying to differentiate bonds and super from the cash flow perspective i can tell you that there's not much differences okay whereby as a company okay if they want to issue a sukup okay the key difference is that in terms of the procedure for them to issue a sukup it will be a bit of uh different okay they will actually need to partially sell the ownership to a separate entity most of the situation it will be a special purpose vehicle okay so the ownership of the thing will act uh, of the asset will actually goes to the spv already so in that sense the suku holders right the investor who want to lend the money will actually directly deal with the spv all right you will directly deal with the spv to get the partial ownership for of the asset when they actually lend the money to the issuer but uh on 
technically there's no difference to uh to an uh, investor only on on the technical specification it may be a bit different okay but on the cash flow basis why things are the same you lend your money out for example you lend out ten thousand ringgit and they promise to repay you six percent every year okay semi-annually so semi-annually they will actually pay you three percent three percent one year is six percent okay so they will deliver the cash flow to you by paying as a coupon okay so at the end of the maturity of the bond so for example if this bond is a six years bond then they will wait you will have to collect uh your coupon your interest for 12 times okay for six years okay every year is two times all right so after that six year at the maturity of the bond then you will get back your funds uh and the principal uh, the, the interest everything and the principal okay so the interest you will definitely get at all the intervals okay every six months you will get a uh, three percent interest get it get it so for 12 times plus the the principal repayment at the end of the maturity all right okay so here uh you can actually see a picture uh, okay whereby this is uh uh the authentic uh bond certificate that we can see in the older days all right so in in the older days we can actually see that uh, a bond certificate actually come in a physical asset lah, okay so you can actually see and hold the bond certificate to prove that you are actually an investor a lender of all these bond issuance okay so when and at the second part here right on the bottom here you can actually see that there's a coupon okay so when is the time for the coupon payment right so for example if you invest uh into this bond at january and six months later by first of july you it's supposed to be the time that you are taking your coupon the interest already so what you need to do at that time is that you can tear it out okay that piece that small piece of the coupon you can actually tear it out then go to uh the I think do go to the company and claim your coupon, the interest payment. Okay. So this is this is how the bond works in the older days, I would say. So if you are looking at nowadays how the bonds are actually the bond market is working, all right. So uh basically when you look at bonds, you can actually see a full the the name of the bond in this way. Like they will actually structure it in this way. So perhaps this one I will start with the bottom one. Okay. So this gen m y right is actually the bond name okay so which means this is the issuance uh issuer of the company okay this is Genting malaysia okay this is a bond name Genting malaysia and the coupon rate they already stated at the bond name okay 4.78 percent okay 4.78 percent they will pay it to you every year okay this is the this is the coupon that they promise to you every year they will pay you 4.78 percent interest okay from your day leisure all right and what when is the when is the maturity date of the bond which means uh what's the tenor or what's the duration of this bond this debt issuance okay so it will be until year 2022 okay 31st of march year 2022 okay so you will know by the time by this time the bond will actually uh you will be getting as a bond investor you will be getting all, all the capital repayment you will be getting all the uh bond uh, coupon at the interval so at the end of this uh maturity you will get back all your principal provided that the company don't go bankrupt or default on the payment okay otherwise they will definitely pay you all right so at the type of the bond you can actually see that this is a corporate bond okay corp uh, type the type of the bond is a corporate bond and the currency we can see from here this is a myr ringgit Malay malaysia ringgit bond okay ringgit malaysia all right so on the top okay on the top we can actually see uh this bond is the mgs okay so what is mgs here M mgs actually stand for Mal uh, malaysian government securities okay so at the coupon here they are actually for the government of malaysia okay so this mgs is a uh, issuance a bond issuance from malaysia government okay so malaysia government compared to building malaysia of course the risk of bankruptcy is definitely lower so uh the mgs for the government of malaysia they can enjoy a lower interest rate to pay to the lender the bond uh the the bond investor in this case i would say so so every every year they are paying at least i, I think close to one percent lesser annually okay and the maturity of the bond is 
uh, 15th of March, year 2019. And the type of the bond, this is a government bond. This is a government bond, which is very different compared to a corporate bond. Uh. Government bond is definitely issued by government. Uh, okay? Corporate bond, uh, in terms of the risk, corporate bond, most of the time, it will be definitely higher than a government bond uh, in a standard or typical situation, uh, unless the government, their, their fundamentals in, in, in terms of their debt profile is not very healthy, right? So the currency is still the same, the ringgit. Okay, so by looking at this slide, I guess you will start to understand, okay, by looking at the bond name itself, what you can know about the specification, the term about the bond that you will need to know, okay? So you will know the issuer, the company is actually Genting Malaysia, and the coupon is actually 4.78%. Annually, they will pay you 4.78%. And as the maturity date, when is the end of the duration that I can collect interest from Genting or MGS, uh, the government of Malaysia? Okay, and what's the currency of my investment? Okay, so because Genting, they could have some of the US dollar bonds also, okay? So in that sense, the currency would be USD, all right? So let's proceed to the next slide. So by here, right, okay, we can actually Okay, here we can actually, uh, the next one is the, why do corporates want to issue bonds? Okay, there are three key reasons. As a investor, we need to understand the fundamental and the concept of a bond before we actually start to invest in, 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 into it. The product knowledge is very important. So we need to understand why company, they want to borrow money in this way by issuing bonds, all right? Okay, there are three key reasons. The first thing is actually the cost of funding is definitely lower. Okay, this is definitely true because if we are talking about equity fundings, right? If you want to raise equity by placing out new shares, IPO or product placement, definitely your cost of funding will be high, definitely higher. Sometimes it could be up to double digit, okay, to actually issue some new equities to the market. Because for that one, we actually need to see the cost of equity. But I would say generally, the cost of funding from issuing a bond is definitely lower. If your company are enjoying, are having a very good balance sheet, okay, a healthy fundamental, and in that case, I believe that a lot of the investors were definitely okay and willing to lend the money uh, to this kind of companies, I would say. The second key reason it would be the interest on the bonds, okay? But uh, uh, here is that they are actually deductible on corporate income tax, okay? So, uh, if you are some um, corporate finance technical guy, okay, you, you should be able to understand this one on the basis is that why company need to uh, issue bonds when they doesn't need to raise the funding. One of the key issue is that the interest of the bond is deductible on their interest uh, on their income tax, which means uh, if your company are earning good money, it's okay, whereby you guys don't need Okay, don't need to raise bond uh, to actually fund for any projects one. With the cash in hand, you can actually fund all your projects without any obstacle really. But it's just that you want to save your income tax because those money, those interest that you pay on the bond, okay, for example, if your company, the funding cost is about 5% or 6%, uh, these 6% of the bond issuance, okay, so for example, if you borrow 100 million, so every year 6% is about 6 million. This 6 million, you can actually utilize it to deduct your income tax. So in certain sense, uh, it can help to, uh, it, will, it, it can actually help to uh, increase the company income and uh, in, in, increase the company net profit or the bottom line, like I would say, okay? So in certain sense, although you are paying a certain, uh, you are actually paying a interest out to the lenders, okay? But at the other end, you're actually saving tax, okay? You are saving tax for your company. So ultimately as a corporate, uh, if you are looking at the corporate, finance perspective or the aspect, right? We will definitely ask the company, uh, as an analyst, we will always ask the company management whereby what's the uh, expected or, or the preferred, okay, capital structure of the company that they want, like how many percent gearing ratio they would actually uh, believe it will be the best structure for the company. Uh, in fact, a certain way, I would say in fact, okay, if the company are very rich in 
cash, uh, certainly it may not be a good management, uh, the, the method of the management to manage the company as well, because they are not fully utilizing the benefit or the advantage of their healthy balance sheet. Because if your balance sheet is very healthy, you should actually utilize the opportunity to get some of the cheap fundings from the market. Okay, It can actually help you maximize your shareholders. Uh, you can uh, maximize the shareholders' interest as well by saving them and, and improve improving the bottom line in a sense, lah, right? So the third uh, key reason is actually the ownership interest in the corporate it will not be diluted by adding more owners lah, because some of the time uh, investors will ask this kind of question, hey, why this company they would like to raise so many debts? Why not they just issue or place out some new shares to new new shareholders? So so in, in that sense, right, the government, uh, the, the company, their given ratio is not that high, the debt level is not that high. So they will not be uh, dragged or burdened by the interest burden in that sense, in the, the interest payment. So in that sense, um, they, they, they doesn't need to repay the interest and the principal of the money that they actually borrow from all the lenders or the bond investor, okay? But in that way, right, in that way, it will definitely have a huge dilution effect on your shareholding structure, whereby uh, in the past, all these 100 million net profit are actually shared by 10 of the shareholders. But right now, because you want to raise extra equity fundings and this profit need to share by more, uh, need to share by more owners already. So the pie that you are getting as a normal shareholders, if you doesn't increase your share, right? If you doesn't increase your equity holdings, okay, your earnings in the uh your pie, okay, your profit pie in the company will definitely be diluted. Okay, so these are some of the reasons why company also want to issue bonds is actually to prioritize the ownership interest of the company. Make sure, make sure their bottom line are not diluted. Okay, so the shareholding is not diluted, then the owner will get to enjoy more uh, profit, okay? And they can, in that sense, you can maximize your owner interest, I would say. All right, let's go to next slide, okay? So uh, just to ask, just to let you all know, okay, how we are actually pricing bonds, okay? So on a normal circumstances, uh, the bond pricing, if the bond price actually move up, okay? So most of the time, uh, for, for example, if we are looking at a uh, investment amount of 1,000 ringgit, okay? So if the bond price raised by 1%, okay? If the bond price raised by 1%, it will consider what is anything that is above 100%, I would say, the bond price of above 100, it will be trading and priced at the premium, okay? So in that sense, if the bond price is higher and you want to buy the bond or you want to sell the bond, you can actually transact the deal at a better pricing, okay? Or a higher pricing, I would say. So if the bond price drop, it will be a discount, okay? It will be a discount. For example, if this bond, 1,000, uh, the par value is at 1,000, okay, but the bond price from 100 dropped to 99% already. So the investment amount that you need to fork out is only 990 ringgit, all right? So here we see a difference. If the bond price go up, okay, if the bond price go up, okay, you will need to fork out more money to buy the, the same bond. But if the bond price go down, you will need to fork out lesser money to buy the same bond, all right? Okay, so I believe uh, until this slide, you guys should be still understand, uh, manage to understand uh, what I'm uh, trying to explain easily, okay? So the next slide, I will actually share with you guys more about the relationship between the bond price and, and the yield, okay? So you can understand the terminologies and the process flow, how we actually analyze and judge and understand more about bonds, all right? So there's two key things that we as a bond investor need to be aware, okay? The first thing is the bond price. The second one is the bond yield, okay? The bond yield, which is, which is the interest rate that you will be getting, okay? The, the, the interest rate that you will be getting every year for holding this bond, all right? So why is it when the, you, you, you can see like from, from, from this box, all right? When the bond price go up, the yield will go down. When the bond price go down and the yield will go up, this represents uh, actually uh, an inverse relationship between the bond price and the bond yield in this case, okay? So just to let you all know better, I already prepared 
uh, example here in scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three in a cash flow perspective so that you can understand it better. Okay, so perhaps you can spend the 10 15 seconds on reading and trying to figure out what is happening in the slide first. Then I will drink some water. All right. So yeah. So on the scenario one, we were looking. We will be looking at the bond on uh when the bond pricing is at hundred percent. When the P the pricing is at hundred percent. If this bond they are giving an interest rate, okay, a coupon rate of six percent. Okay. So just to let you all know, when the coup uh when the bond is actually issued, okay, on the first day, okay. Uh, for example, this one, the, the bond is actually issued. Uh, uh, when the bond is issued, okay, they will actually fix the coupon rate, which is the interest uh, payment that they are promised to give. Okay, so for this coupon rate is 6%. Okay, so the par value here we are looking at uh, in the investment amount of 1000 ringgit. Okay, so by when you are investing in, into the bond, okay, on the first day when you are buying this bond, you are just paying 1000 ringgit. And Every year you will be getting your six percent interest. Okay, you will be getting your six percent interest. Okay, so two zero one eight you get six percent, two zero one nine you get six percent succeeding it, and because the bond actually matured on year two thousand twenty. Okay, so at the end, at the maturity itself, you will be getting your principal one thousand ringgit plus the sixty ringgit uh sixty ringgit coupon. Okay, so by looking at it your yield to maturity, the interest that we are enjoying, the return that we are enjoying every year is 6%, okay? This first scenario, I guess, is pretty clear and very, pretty direct, okay? So the, the gimmicks actually uh, showed it, we, we, we will be understanding the gimmick on the, uh, on the scenario two and three, all right? So if the bond price actually go up by 1%, all right? If the bond price actually go up by 1%, the coupon rate is about, uh, it's, it's still the same, okay? It's still the same. The coupon rate is still the same, 6%. What is the difference here is actually on the first date itself, okay? When you are buying the bond that time, you will need to extra fork out 1% when you are buying the bond. You need to fork out extra 1% when you are buying the bond in this phase, okay? So the only difference is that you need to fork out extra 10 ringgit, okay? And every year you will be getting 6%, 60 ringgit, 60 ringgit. At the end of the maturity, you will be getting back 1,000, uh, 1,060 ringgit. Why you are getting 1,060 ringgit only? Not 1,010 plus another 60 ringgit. Okay, you need to understand. Uh, you need to understand in this case, whereby when the company issue the bond, the company only take, okay? The company only take 1,000 ringgit to uh from the investor from the bond investor okay but uh, it's just that when the bond price raise in value okay when the bond price increase in value from 1000 ringgit to 100 uh 1010 ringgit that time right okay when you are buying that bond uh from from the previous owner in that sense uh, okay you are actually forking out extra 10 ringgit okay because you believe that okay because you believe that uh, the fundamental of the bond issuer are improving. So you don't mind to fork out extra 10 ringgit to own that bond, okay? So in the actual reality, the other cash flow will stay, remain the same. And the end, at the end of the maturity, the bond uh, issuer, the company, they will only repay you 1,000 plus the 6% interest rate, okay? So because you are you are forking out extra 10 ringgit here, but you are getting the same cash flow at the, uh, the remaining panel. So your yield, your return at this uh, stage for the second scenario, it will be lower, okay? Because you are forking out extra 10 ringgit already and you are still getting the same cash flow, okay? So your yield to maturity here will be 5.6%, okay? So I guess this example are pretty straightforward. So the third scenario is that if the bond price actually go down, so if the bond price actually go down, by the time that you want to buy the bond, you will just need to pay 990 ringgit, okay? But at the end, at the maturity, 
you will be receiving 1,000 plus 60 ringgit, okay? So in that sense, you are forking out lesser money, but you are receiving the same car value of 1,000 ringgit. Then of course, if you are managed to buy the bond price at a discount, you will be getting a higher yield maturity. So yield to maturity is actually the return, the holding period return that we will be getting from holding this one, all right? So you can see, if you are buying at 99% at a discounted rate, your return is the highest. If you are buying it at a premium, your return is definitely lower. But if you are buying at the middle, which is the par value, your, your yield, your return will be same as the coupon rate. Okay? So there's three ways la, okay, for us to make money from bonds investment. There's three ways for us to make money from bond investment. The core component here, it will be definitely from the coupon payment. Okay, I would say, the most important one will definitely be the coupon payment, the interest rate that we are getting, the coupon that we are getting, the fixed or the pr uh, promised coupon that we are getting from the bond issuers, the company, okay? But if you are actually buying the bond at a discount, or, or, or I, I can say, for example, if you are buying at 110, but you manage to sell the bond at 112, okay? 12%, okay, 112%, you are still making a 2% capital appreciation there. Is it will be still possible, okay? So the second core component for us to make money on bond, it will be from the capital appreciation. The third one, it will be from forex gain now, okay? It, it could be a loss as well, like if you're investing into foreign currency bond, then if these three uh, components will add up and become your return, all right? So it will be, uh, I guess this part is pretty straightforward as well. You can actually just see the coupon payment, okay, as some sort of a, a, a replacement for dividend, okay, if you are looking at a, a equity shareholders point of view and if you are comparing a bond to equity, it could be the difference, okay, dividend, it will, at this place, it will be replaced by a coupon payment already. All right. So the two key risks on bond investing that we will be uh, need to definitely be aware, like I would say, the two things that we need to be aware, all right? The key risk, okay? The first risk, it will be the uh, credit risk, whereby the company or the issuer doesn't have the money to repay to the bondholders, okay? If the company, okay, uh, meets uh, any cash flow problem and they cannot refinance the money, okay? They cannot refinance the bond. They cannot get the funding to repay the investor in the sense, okay? They will just show you, now you see, my wallet is empty. I don't have money to repay you, okay? So in the sense, you are actually facing a default, which is uh, coming from a credit risk. So in the sense, uh, as a as a bond investor, we will definitely need to, uh, we definitely need to evaluate uh, the credit profile of the bond, uh, the bond issuers, the company, to make sure that they have the ability to make the repayment to us. Okay, it's just like banks. Okay, when they when they want to lend money to us, they will check, look at our secrets, look at our repayment pattern, look at our credit profile to know that hey, we are actually um some good kaki Okay, we are some good uh repayer that we will definitely repay our money on time okay so this is of course as a bond investor anything that is related to that right it will have a credit risk component here that as a bond investor we will need to be careful all right so the second risk it would be the interest rate risk that we we will definitely face when we are investing in bond investing all right so uh, just to let you all know, just to let you all know, you have to imagine a bit at this sense, okay? Like the example that I sh uh, shared with you just now, okay? If, okay, if the bond, uh, you are investing 1,000 ringgit and you are getting 6% coupon, you are getting 6% coupon from the company. They promise to repay you interest rate of 6% every year, okay? At this juncture, because our interest rate is that uh, if I'm not mistaken, the FT rate is about 2%, okay, slightly less than 2%, but if you manage to get some promotional rate, it would be slightly more than 2%, okay? So we are comparing 2% to a 6% coupon, okay? So for example, if Gunting are issuing a bond and they want to get money from you, they are giving you 6%, perhaps you will actually consider because 
at the FD rate at this moment is only giving you 2% return, okay? They are only giving you 2% risk-free rate return, okay? But here, because you are taking some extra credit risk, okay? Because there's still a risk that uh, Genting Malaysia will go bankrupt and face bankruptcy issues, okay? So you will definitely uh, have some credit risk imposed on the uh, that the, the bond investor will, will be facing in that sense, okay? So in that sense, right, okay, you are willing to invest uh, invest into that bond that is issued by the Genting and to happily take the six uh take the six percent coupon. Okay, so in that sense, FD rate two percent and the coupon are giving you six percent. Okay, and the company are giving you six percent. But imagine if our uh because as we know, COVID are actually impacting our economy very badly, like I would say. But for example, if everything normalized and economy recover, business recover back to the normal condition, environment, things normalize, all right? So if things normalize back to the uh, to the previous days, the normal days already, the bank Nagara will definitely normalize the interest rate, the OPR rate as well, okay? So if bank Nagara increase back the interest rate back to, for example, 3%, okay? They increase uh, 1.25%, 1% back to 2 point something or 3%, okay? So comparing to an FD, that time, I believe you can get 3 something or uh, at a promotion rate of 4%, uh, all right? 4% FD rate compared to a 6% bond, which one it will be more attractive? Eight, I believe. Some of you will still think that hey, six percent from Genting Malaysia is still very attractive. I will still take the Genting deal, okay? But some of the investor here, they may start to be shaky already. They will start to be shaky because they will think, hey, uh, investing into this uh fixed deposit, uh, perhaps I shouldn't say investing, I will say depositing our money with the bank. I'm getting a risk free rate of about four percent. Technically, we can say it's risk free risk-free, but of course, bank will have some, uh, if bank face liquidity risk, there will still be a chance that bank will actually go into liquidity problem and or bankruptcy and also. Okay, okay. But if we are comparing FT 4% to a 6% bond, okay, 6% coupon bond in this sense, some of you will, will have a definitely switch, okay, switch to investing and depositing your money with the bank to get their FT rates already. So in this case, we can actually know that to for you to understand the interest rate risk, whenever interest rate goes up, bond price will definitely go down. Uh, that this is the inverse relationship between interest rate and the bond price. Okay, when the bond price go down, the interest rate will go up. Okay, but when the interest rate go down, the bond price will definitely go up. Okay, because the FD rate are no longer that that attractive, that investor will lean on. Uh, taking extra okay or extra risk extra credit risk by getting a better return okay because as a master we always have option okay so we need to wait everything wait the risk and see whether we can actually take the risk okay so these are the two key risks as a bond investor we need to be aware all right so if a company goes bankrupt okay so i believe uh this question uh I actually heard it from many investors before. Okay, so if, um, most of the time when I introduce bonds to them or I recommend bonds to my clients, they will definitely ask me, hey, if the company goes bankrupt, what will happen now? Okay, so just to let you all know, okay, just to let you all know, if the company goes to bankrupt, the first thing the liquidator will do is, okay, they will try to restructure the company. If they can come up with some favorable terms with the equity holders and the bond holders, then the company may not need to liquidate everything and go to bankruptcy, okay? But if they couldn't restructure the company, okay? So in the sense, they will need to sell off everything. They will need to sell off every asset of the company and convert it into cash, okay? And convert it into cash, okay? They may need to face a haircut, like for example, if your this factory is worth about 100 million, but because you are liquidating your asset and the liquidator, they don't care about the value. They want to get back as much as possible at the, as soon as possible, okay? So what they will do, they will, they will just take a 10, 20% haircut and sell your asset and convert everything into a bond within a given time frame, okay? Then the remaining money or the cash that the company still have like, by selling all this asset, the first thing, the first person that they will actually repay is the debt holders 
or the bond holder. So, so of course, of course here, the debt holder, it, it could be banks, then bond holders, it could be individuals or in institutions, uh, all right? Then the second player that will be getting the company uh, money, the, the asset, it will be the preference shares holder. Then the last one that get anything that is left over it will be the equity shareholders okay so in this sense if okay if the cash or the money is only enough to repay the bondholders then sorry the preference shares holder and the equity shareholder it will not get anything all right so here here is a table for us to actually compare what's the difference between bond and fixed deposit Okay, so just to let you all know, uh, a chances of having a capital appreciation is definitely a yes for bond, a no for fixed deposit. And in terms of insurance, bond is not insured by anybody. Okay, but for fixed deposit, it will be insured up to 250K by PIDM. In terms of liquidity for bond, of course, like any securities or any investment securities, you will need to see whether in the market there's an offer price, there's a buyer that's willing to take your uh, your securities, then only you can sell in the market, all right? But if, okay, uh, for fixed deposit, the liquidity, you're definitely coming at a reduced or forfeited interest rate, okay? Because we all know the fixed deposit terms actually change. Most of the bank at this juncture, they are not giving you uh, any interest already. If you want to withdraw your FD or liquidate your FD at an earlier time before the maturity, all right? Then the return, of course, for bond normally, it will definitely be higher, okay? Then for fixed deposit, normally it will be lower. The next one, okay, if we are com comparing individual bonds and bond fund, okay, the, in terms of the certainty of the cash flow, the uh, individual bond is very transparent and yes, okay, is they will have a, a certainty of cash flow because once you, if you are investing in this bond, you will definitely know uh, what's the coupon that they are paying annually and things like that. So you will know all the terms and the specification already, okay. So, but as a, but as an investor of, uh, bond funds, right, you may not know when will you will actually receive certain cash flow because it will be depends on the fund manager whether they, uh, they are buying and sell bond constantly and whether they want to declare uh, income distribution for uh, fund investor in the sense that, all right? And it, of course, in terms of diversification, diversification for bond fund, there will be a good level of diversification because bond fund, they will help you to invest into 30, 50 or 100 bonds in your portfolios. But for individual bonds, no. You, if Unless you're buying a few individual bonds, then you will start to actually lower down your portfolio risk and start to diversify your risk over. All right. So the next part we will actually I will actually share with you where are the bonds traded in Malaysia, okay? The first place is actually over the counter, okay? The over the counter is what uh, on the finance guide, the general terms, we say OTC, all right? So OTC uh, for Malaysia, you can understand it in this way. So if you are a high net worth investor, why I actually classify as a high net worth investor? Because, because in Malaysia, if you're a high net worth investor, uh, the entry, okay, the minimum entry for individual bond in the market, okay, is about 2,050,000, 250 k ringgit Malaysia for you to buy a one standard loan of bond, okay. So what you need to do is you engage with the bankers, RM, relationship managers, and then you, you just let them know uh, you would like to subscribe or buy into any bonds, okay? So they will be the banks, right? Uh, they will have their own dealers. They will actually deal with all the players in the market, like Maybank, they will actually buy. Uh, they may, if they have this kind of inventory, then they may actually sell it to the investor. But if Maybank, they don't have, for example, uh, if as an investor, you want to find a bond from uh, Kajaya Prospect Property or you want to find a bond from EcoWorld, okay? So you want if you find this kind of bond and the bank itself, they don't have this inventory, they may actually get the inventory from a second dealer, from CMB or RHB perhaps. If RHB or CMB, they have this bond on hand, then they will sell it to the main bank. The main bank will actually sell the bond to you, okay? So it is actually happened and occurred at a customized 
basis. So this is what, what we call OTC, okay? So everything are quite customized, uh, okay? This is the traditional avenue that we can actually go and buy our bonds, okay? But it's just that the entry uh, ticket is quite high, I would say, in this sense. Uh. And the second way whereby Busan Malaysia actually enable the uh, exchange listed bond, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 10 years or slightly more than 10 years. I can't remember the years already, uh, which date they actually start to launch the ETPS. All right? But the second option that you can buy bonds is over the exchange, okay? whereby Busan Malaysia, they will actually evaluate and list some of the bonds uh, from, from the approved uh, bond issuers like Dana Infra, Dana Infra, okay? So they will actually list the bond on the exchange. So if you have a normal trading account, what you need to search is just search, go 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 to the uh, your trading hall by searching bonds, uh, the category classification, you can actually filter it bonds. Then you can see all the bonds that is available on Bursa Malaysia, okay? So in terms of the pricing, okay? In terms of the pricing, it will be determined or set, okay? By some of the market makers, the bankers, or the buyer or the seller of the individual investor that is holding the bonds, okay? So you can actually go and uh, buy the bonds like the buying the shares normally, okay? Just hit the ask price or you want to queue at the bid price also can, it's okay, right? Okay? So, uh, and the minimum size of the bond, uh, it's not like the equity investment, we will need to definitely, uh, on a minimum level, one lot is 100 units, okay? It's not, the case for bond investment uh, on Busan Malaysia, the minimum is only 10 units, okay? So what you need to do if you want to buy one lot, which is only 10 units, you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the bond pricing is 100 ringgit la, for per, per unit, la, 100 ringgit, 100 plus, if it's trading at premium. So you just pay the 100, uh, for example, 102 or 103 times the 10 unit for one lot that you are getting, 1,000, plus a bit, then you can actually, uh, uh, more of it, then, then you can actually own a, a lot of bond by yourself already. So you can actually start investing bond with uh, 1,000 plus ringgit in Busan Malaysia. All right. So just to let you all know, like, how's the selling and the buying of bonds work in Malaysia? Okay. So uh, from buying a bond, uh, if, the bond is a new issuance. It will be uh, it will be some some sort of similar application now. Okay, like you are subscribing for I, I, IPOs. You will, perhaps if you try to uh, subscribe IPO before, you will need to lock on. You you will need to lock in to your bank website. Okay, and the facility there and select e IPO and things like that to uh, to subscribe for IPO. All right. Actually, when a bond when they are going through a uh, primary market issuance on the Busan Malaysia, they will, they will have uh, the similar channel for you to subscribe also, okay? Or through the secondary market, which is via the trading hall, the stock exchange, whereby it's just like uh, similarly to buying a stock, okay? If you want, want to sell, it's the same. It's either you sell back to the other buyers, the uh, new buyers that are interested uh, in bonds, or you hold it until maturity, okay? At the end of the tenure, then the investor, you will get back the money from the issuers uh, in terms of the interest, the principal, everything, all right? So basically, yeah, this is how we can actually buy and sell bonds on Bursa Malaysia, all right? So some tips uh, for you guys, uh, if you want to buy um, bonds, right, you will definitely need to go through the prospectus or, or the info memo of the bonds, okay? All these things, if you are buying from Busan Malaysia listed, uh, the exchange listed bond, uh, you can actually go to the filing and try to find the info memo of the bonds and understand more about some of the features inside, okay? There will be uh, a take document that you will need to go through, lah, all right? So the key takes away from my presentation uh, in this webinar today, okay, the first thing it will be bonds are relatively safer if we are compared, okay, if we are comparing to stocks, okay. And the second thing is that the default risk and the interest rate risk can actually be mitigated because we can actually do our fundamental analysis, our homework to know that hey, actually the company, whether they have they will have issue getting back some of the cash flow to repay the bonds. Okay, so if you don't think there's any issue and the company is actually a cash cow, so you can actually mitigate this kind of reason, okay? 
Then the third one, it would be uh, the bond is a very good source of income. Lah, okay, if you are wanting, if if you actually wanted to get stable and predictable cash flow, bond could be a good source of uh, income for bond uh, for for investor like you, lah, all right. So yeah, that's all for my uh, presentation today. So we will proceed to Q and A session. Okay, if you have any questions for Anson, please write in the Q and A box, and then we we'll address them accordingly. So thank you so much, Anson, for a very engaging session on bonds. I guess many of us here would have understood bond better, including how to calculate yield, and also we understand what is yield to maturity. Okay, and some of the real correlationship between interest rate and also bond price. Edmund Chu would like to ask how many ETBS now available on Bursa Malaysia? If I'm question. not mistaken, I think it's three. Yeah. Mm, actually, that no. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, it's four, three. Four. The answer is four. Four, four. Okay. Yeah. 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 If I may add, it's three is by um Dana Infra uh for the construction of MRT. And then the other one more is by Isan Sukut. So that was the issued by Kazana. That is the I think the first socially responsible uh ETBS uh, that is used to construct schools. <laughs> So yeah, so that is how the ETVS are like. So they are in total four. Uh, interest rate, I think, is around 4% per annum range, plus minus. Okay, um, yeah. Tiong Tin would like to ask, could you explain what is rating and risk? Anson, are you okay, okay? Uh, rating uh, because still due, due to the uh the, the duration of the webinar is not that long uh, so I didn't touch on the bond rating part now, right? So you can hear me right, Shane? Yes, can hear just now uh, lose you for a bit. Oh uh, okay, right. I think the connection is not too stable, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so for the rating, actually, uh you can actually try to go and Google search. Okay, try and go and Google search on the you, you can actually type like bond ratings from S&P, Fitch rating, all these kind of rating agency. Uh, but it depends, okay? Uh, I would say not all the bonds are actually rated. There will be some um, bonds in the market that is un unrated one. So as an investor, at the first thing that we need to uh, do is we, we still have to do our own homework if we are dealing with rated bonds or unrated because, because uh, the, the rating agencies they only they only do the analysis or their homework based on uh, historical data of some past data. If the future or the prospect of the company is changing or evolving, things are not looking so good already, they may actually uh, readjust or adjust the revaluate the rating of, of the of the bond and readjust it lower if the prospect we will definitely still need to do our own homework lab, okay? Okay. Uh, the next question is by Chi Hien. Uh, based on past few year performance on Unitrust bond, it's very low, uh, less than 3% a year. So should we invest in Unitrust bonds or other alternative? All right. Uh, a very good question. So I'm not sure what kind of Unitrust are uh, a bond fund that you are referring to. Okay. Because if we are looking at the past few Few years whereby we are we are from a high interest rate environment go to a low interest rate environment at this kind of environment definitely bond funds will enjoy a very good capital appreciation in the process one so uh, I would say that okay I I would I would say most of the uh, better performing or good performing bond funds right they should be having a better return that's uh that that's they are better than the average coupon one. So for example, if the interest rate, the average coupon is paying you percent, right? Plus a few percentage point on the capital appreciation. Every year you should be getting a seven, eight, nine percent one. Okay. So at that kind of environment, if the bond fund is not giving you 
do that kind of return, I would say that one is a very lousy bond fund, uh, a very lousy fund manager. Uh, you should actually look somewhere else. Uh. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Anson, for the tip. Uh, uh, this question is interesting. Uh, asked by hmm. Davy Hong. Does the bond price normally okay. increase just before the X date of the interest payment? Uh, increase before the X date of the interest payment. Yeah, I think people... Uh, this one you are referring to bond. to bond, right? Okay, okay. So... Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. So, okay. So, certainly you need to know that. Okay, so for the normal o OTC market bond, okay, actually it makes no difference. Okay, it makes no difference for you to actually, uh, for example, just to let you know, just to let you know, okay, actually we, we will call, the bond is ha actually having a uh, dirty price and clean price, right? but that one is quite technical already. I won't touch that one, but I will just let, I will just let you know if you are buying, okay, if you are buying a bond in the secondary market, if you are buying the bond in the secondary market, you are buying the bond from a previous uh, owner of the bond, okay? So for example, if the bond is supposed to pay a, uh, is supposed to pay interest by January and July. Okay, every six months they will pay the interest, the coupon already. All right, but in between the previous owner want to sell the bond, uh, be it April, okay, be it April, they want to uh, they actually want to sell the bond at April. So you will actually think it hey, in that sense, ah, uh, the owner is not the owner is not getting the uh the interest payment by. July already. So the owner will actually lose out the interest rate payment that uh, he's supposed to get that for, for, for the first three or four months of, of, of the investment. Okay. I, I, I would tell you for the market maker, they will actually, if you are buying bonds from, if you are buying bonds from the exchange, uh, they will actually factor in the accrued interest. Okay. The interest that the previous buyer should adjust the previous owner should actually receive okay so they will actually adjust it higher day by day every day uh what's are the what is the supposed uh coupon the accrued interest that that's the technical term that what we call okay the accumulated interest that the owner should receive they will actually factor into the price already one so uh, as a new owner or, or the new buyer in the sense you won't be able to take advantage in the sense one be it you are buying it from the exchange or you are buying it from OTC or you are buying from the bank, it will still be the same one. You cannot take advantage in that sense. Right? You will still need to fork out that few percentage point of the coupon payment to the previous owner. Okay, so you will need to fork out in advance. Right? Okay, uh, for example, why you need to fork out in advance? Because, because you didn't own the bond from January until April. Okay, so you need to fork out that four months of coupon to the previous owner first. Then you hold from April until July, okay? Until July, these three, four months, okay? These three months, then you will be able to get the previous six months all in a whole lump sum together in terms of the interest rate, okay? So, yeah, for your understanding. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. That's very insightful. Uh, the next question asked by Zul, can we use technical analysis to analyze bond as good? Uh, Zul, uh, just to let you know, uh, for bonds, I would say most of the time, I would say most of the time it's not meant to be for trading one. It's not meant for trading one. Uh, it's for conservative investors. They would like to like uh, buy and hold a bond and enjoy the income that's generated from the coupon. Then they will go for uh, then then they will definitely go for bond. Okay, in the sense because the price volatility for bond is very very little one. I would say uh, if a good rating bond uh, the maximum. Uh, draw down or the range of the price movement of the bond price, uh, it may be just 2 3% every year for some those kind of good rated bonds. Uh, okay, so uh, I would say most of the behind bonds are not meant for trading uh, unless you are buying into certain company that are having a liquidity problems, then the bondholders are selling panically, panically uh, on the on, on the bond, then you may actually trade on those kind of situations. But of course, you are betting on the company whether they will be able to repay the money. Lah. If they are not be able to repay the money, then the bond price may drop further or they may declare bankrupt, then you couldn't get any money out of your investment already. Yeah. 
o k Shi Yi would like to ask the next question, which is any tips on how to choose a good exchange trader bonds and super on Bursa? Thanks. I would say uh, those... Maybe, uh, Anson, maybe, maybe I share my screen for the available uh, ETBS right, yeah, uh, yeah. for the benefit of our audience. So here are the four ETBS that are available on uh, Bursa Malaysia. Yeah, the threes are on uh, issued by Dana Infra, National Berhad for MRT Project, and the last one is Isan Suku, like I've mentioned earlier. Okay, Anson, go ahead. All right, okay. So what you need to do, okay, the, the first thing what you need to do is you need to actually uh, study, okay, you need to study in terms of specification of the bond, like what's the yield, what's the tenor, all this kind of thing. Because all these kind of uh, different terms will definitely affect the pricing of the bonds. On. So just to let you know, like, if you... If we are looking at the yield at this moment now, okay, for the for the first ETPS, the Dana in front one that is maturing on 2023. La. So in terms of the duration, it's left about uh, I would say less than two years. Uh, uh, less, less than two years. And the yield that you are getting every year is actually 4%. Okay, it's only 4%. So, like the example that I mentioned to you, you guys previously, okay, if interest rate or the FD rate in Malaysia are going on the upward trends. Then do you think four percent is still attractive? Okay, this is the question that you need to ask yourself, lah. Okay, so uh, you will still you will need need to know, uh, you will need to know if you committed to buy the bond and hold it for two years and hold it for two years, definitely you will not. Uh, you will be getting the you that you are promised to re uh, receive already if the company managed to repay the money because once you the you are at definitely fixed at that sense already okay but but if at any time point between you would like to sell the bond then you will need to depend on the pricing of the bond at that uh, at that moment if the interest rate are on the upward trend, and the bond price is going down, you may actually suffer a capital depreciation in that sense. Okay, so there are many things that you will need to actually be uh look at and be aware. Mm, yeah, I actually just noticed that you're right, Anson. There are only three because the third one expired. Uh, the third one matured oh. already. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Thirty <laughs> twenty third July. Okay, matured last last month. Okay, so now available. ETBS are left with three, which is two are issued by Northern Infra. Uh, one is by Isan Sukula. So the yield is uh, 4% 4, 4 plus, and uh, the tenure is uh, uh, 7 to 15 years. Of course, uh, now uh, maybe the remaining tenures, uh, some are less than two years. Okay, so you need be, to be aware. So these are the available ETBS on Bursa Malaysia. So you, you can, you know, based on your personal risk appetite to decide which one you want to add in your portfolio. The next question is asked by David Yong, uh, Yong with the QE tapering in the US happening, mm -hmm. how would it affect the price of Malaysia bond? I would say um, most of the time, the direct relationship is not so much here okay I, but, but i would say uh if the tapering tapering which means the the Fed, federal reserve they are not printing money or they are not buying bonds at a higher rate that we are seeing previously okay of course it will start to affect the bond price already especially on the junk bond or some of the investment grade bonds that are in the u.s side okay but for local malaysia bond funds are uh, for local Malaysia bonds, okay, the fund flow will definitely look at our OPR direction, okay. It will definitely look at our OPR direction, and I would say it's unlikely, it's unlikely for Bank Negara to further cut our rate again, uh, All right, so it should be on the higher end really once things start to normalize, uh. mm, Okay, um, the next question is: Are investors subject? So income tax on the interest on bonds. Uh yes. Yes. You will still need to actually declare it. Yeah. Actually, for your fixed deposit, you are supposed to declare also. 
Oh, this is new yeah. also. Yeah, it's just that, that many people they are not doing it. Uh. The interest earned from fixed deposit will need to decline in index. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. The next question is uh hang on, yeah. Are you aware of the average transaction for ETBS volume? Uh? Average transaction of ETPS. Uh, <gasps> yeah. This one I didn't really go and observe. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So Saifu asked, are Malaysia government bonds, sorry, are government bonds always lower rate than corporate bonds? Why is this so? How do you measure government bond coupon rate is reasonable? Okay, okay. Uh, I will say most of the time it will be lower. Okay, the key reason is because the financial stability of the government is most of the time you better from from normal commercial companies or corporates. Uh, this one is for sure. Uh, okay, so this is a key reason they can actually enjoy a lower rate because you 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 know that their risk profile uh their profile is better. They definitely can repay you money. Uh, so you are you are okay to lend to them at a lower rate with the peace of mind, okay? For most investors, it will be this case, okay? So, uh, the second part of the question is what already? Yeah, sorry, Jay. Oh, um, uh, how do you measure that the government bond coupon rate is reasonable? Oh, oh, for this one, right? For this one, right? You will need to do relative comparison between bonds already. This is a bit uh, technical. It's a bit technical, but whereby previously when I was... Uh, Bond analyst, we will need to actually uh because for Malaysia governments uh, okay, I would say easily they will have uh double digit kind of num number of bonds. And so it's quite easy for you to actually find some similar tenor bonds and compare the spread between. Okay, so for example, this bond uh is having a tenor of about 4.2 years. Okay, 4.2 years bond, uh, the U is trading at about, for example, okay, for example, four percent. But if you manage to spot a bond uh, that is like 5.3 years, okay, it's only like certainly one month or one month plus longer, but it's giving you extra like 0.1 or 0.2%, then it would be quite meaningful already. So you will, I should say, you need to do more relative comparison between bonds to see what's the difference, then you can uh, gauge the whether it's reasonable or not. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the next question is asked by Muhammad Yuharith. I learned that there are bonds with negative yields. Uh, why would in be investor be interested in it? Bond with negative yields. Yeah. Okay. Yield actually, bonds. uh, actually, for investors says that there is buying negative yield bonds are uh, those are insti uh investors. Okay. Where, whereby in those company, uh, well, in those country, they are having a negative interest rate environment. So if they don't put the bond, if they don't put the money in the negative U bond, right? If they pull it in the bank, it's likely that the bank will actually charge them more money compared to the negative U here. So that's why they have no choice and they, they prefer to put it here because some of the government they know, hey, this government for your, I know it definitely won't go for bankrupt one. So I just want to place my money here and enjoy a lower deflation, that kind of depreciation in the sense that uh, this is how it works. Mm, okay, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dennis would like to ask, can you tell us about looming sovereign debt crisis where there will be a loss of confidence in developed countries' bonds in the U.S.? Or Europe due to too much debt owed, which leads to the bond market to collapse. Do you still remember the Asia bonds or the US bonds? At this sense, do you still right? recommend, not remember, recommend Asia bonds or US bonds? Sorry, uh, eyesight bad. <laughs> okay. The question is a bit long. Let me read yeah. a bit. Uh... Then it's lie. Then okay. it's lie. So do yeah. you still recommend US bond or the Asia bond. I would say as uh, I would say at this juncture, I would say at this juncture, personally, I would think that the US bond are better. 
personally, I would think that US bond are better because if you actually look at the, you actually monitor bond market for the past few months, the Asian bond market actually enjoy a very good rally like in, in terms of surprising. But at, at this juncture, the high yield bond space from the Asia bond are actually dominated uh, by, by news from the China side where, whereby they want, want to control many regulations. Uh, and some of the uh, some of the government-linked entities also, they doesn't want to support them in terms of some of the refinancing. So in terms of the, uh, I would say some of the high yield, Asian high yield bond side, they will have some uh, pressure in that sense. So if we are looking, if you are looking at stable bond funds or stable bonds, then I would say you should actually go for investment grade in this sense. Because I guess uh, for, for the junk bond or, or the high yield bond funds or the ETF, pricing are already factored in. Yeah, the, it has priced in what, is, what we are looking at for this recovery team. Really. So you feel uh, US bond are better? Lah. Uh, yes, and I would okay. prefer investment grade bond. All right, so US investment grade bond. Okay, so what about the looming sovereign debt crisis? Uh, that his first question. Do you have any opinion on that? Loss of confidence in the developed country bonds. Uh. Actually, for this one, uh, for this one, you will need. Uh, actually, I, I, I should actually tell you uh, this may not be the case. Uh, this may not be the case because ultimately in the global investment market, in the global investment market, bond are still the largest market. If you compare to equity market, bond market is definitely larger and investors still need to get uh, diversifications and income distribution from bond investment. So it's just that as a normal individual investor, we may, we may think that things are looking quite bad if we are looking at the depth level of the country and everything, but you need to understand that if the uh, the Federal Reserve or or the central banks of the European, they can actually uh, keep printing money and the growth are still there and things may not be that bad luck as we are what we are looking. Okay. Anson, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Your yeah. your line your line wasn't that good a moment ago. But you can hear just now. Okay. Sorry. Ang Kwan would like to ask the next question, which is, are Malaysia sovereign bonds likely to be downgraded and would it impact the corporate bonds domestically? Okay. Uh, if you are buying in, into bond funds, then this is the valid questions that you will need to be, you will need to know. Lah, okay. Uh, sorry, I need to find back the questions. Again. Okay. Okay. So the first thing is whether it's likely to be downgraded, I would say no, because it has been downgraded already. If you actually look at some of the headlines in the past two years, uh, the outlook of our country has, has been put into negative and our uh, Soviet ratings has been downgraded. Okay, So uh, definitely it will trigger some sell-off. Uh, definitely it will trigger some sell-off. Uh, but I, I, I would say most of the time when things are getting worse, when things are getting worse, uh, the instant investor, most of the investor would have already be aware of this already. So in the process, there has been selling, there has been selling, 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 and it won't wait until the moment that uh, the uh, rating agency actually declared that eh, the server ratings has been downgraded, then only they start to sell the bonds. Uh, okay, this is what we need to be aware. And will it impact the corporate bond domestically of course yes okay but i would say at a very minimum uh level i would say at, at a minimum level because what you need to understand is that corporate and government uh the thing is a bit different huh? the thing is a bit different because the credit risk that we are uh we are having from the corporate bonds are stick with the corporate financial profile okay it is it, stick with the issue itself and the company uh if you are looking at the country and the company, the relationship and the linkage between the country is actually on the interest rate outlook that is linked to the interest rate risk that we are having in investing in in into bond. So it would be a two different thing here. Yeah. Okay. All right. The next question is by Wun Kai. Uh, 
Uh, is ETF for bond a good buy? Is ETF for bond a good buy? I would say if you want to get easy access at a low cost and with a good uh, scale of diversification, ETF is definitely a good buy. But there's a lot of, uh, there's many types of ETF you can choose from the market. If, if you go, go to the Malaysia, the, the selection is a bit less, la, whereby there's only three uh, ETPS in the market. But if you are uh, looking at a market with a lot of uh, selection, you can go to the U.S. market, whereby in the U.S. market, you can actually choose whether you want high-yield ETF or junk bond ETF or you want investment-grade ETF or silver uh, ETF. Also, all these kind of bonds also you can select one or you want Asian high-yield bonds ETF also you, will, you, you can actually select uh, in uh, different segments uh. Okay. So the key thing is that you need to know which market or which area of bond that you prefer to invest at which point of time, at which juncture. That one is very important. Mm. Um, Paul, why would I like to ask, do you encourage investment in non-ETBS? If yes, how can we liquidate it in the secondary market in the future? Okay. Uh, Non-ETPF, this one you will need to get a dealer to execute the trade for you, okay? So if you are investing in non-ETPS, uh, which means you're investing it on the OTC market, then normally if you are buying from the banks, then you just go back to the bank's dealer and tell them you want, you want to sell. They will help you to get a quotation. And pay. Mm. But I would say, I would say uh, most of the time, if you want to invest into a bond, you need to have you need to at least okay. You need to at least uh be okay with holding the bond until its maturity. Okay, because sometimes the interest rate environment may go against you. Many things will may go against you, and the bond pricing may not be favorable at certain time. One, okay, so if you are not okay to hold it, like for example, this bond is a three years tenor. You are not okay to hold it for three years and getting every year six percent. Then I guess uh you may need to consider on uh, looking at some of uh look, comparing at the issuer names uh, in that sense because if the issuer is a very famous issuer or famous can uh corporate, then in terms of the liquidity in the market, it will be definitely better. And so in that sense, it will be easier for you to sell the bond in the secondary market in the in the future like If not then it will be quite hard. Hmm. Usually government bond or corporate bond are more liquid. Uh, uh, it will be definitely government bond. Uh, uh, if we are compared, the first thing, definitely government bond will be more liquid. Then the second part, if you are looking at the segment of, uh, at, at the space of the corporate bond, then, then definitely investment grade side, it will be more liquid. Uh. Okay. So, so for those illiquid, uh, not so popular bonds, right? Uh, say a not so popular corporate bond, so there are also chances that uh we, we might not be able to sell uh, sell uh, if you want to, correct? Yep, yep. In that case, you may need to you may need to hold the bond until end of the tenor. Yeah. Mm, okay. So for a liquid bond, like right? liquid bond, right? because I'm not in the OTC market. Right? So for the liquid bond, right, how long does it take for it to be sold? Or buyer uh, when you, when there's any issues. um I would say be it fast it, it can be within few minutes also can be because okay. most of the dealers in the market they will be using the Bloomberg terminal uh, for Malaysia is like that they will be using the Bloomberg terminal to actually ask in the market okay so for example if I'm from Maybank okay I will actually text the use the terminal to actually let uh, ask in the market if hey, anyone have inventory for this bond. Okay, they, they, will, they will put the coding, the icing coding in the terminal and let them know. So those who have the inventory that is ready to sell, they will just reply back to them. So actually the whole process can be quite fast also. So usually we buy from the uh we buy from another seller or we buy from the bank? Uh it can be either way. It can be either way. Uh, but if for example, uh, if bank have the if bank have the inventory to directly sell to you then likely the pricing it will be lower because if they need to buy the bond from somebody else other banks or some other sellers okay then they will need to pay them at one layer already so they will try to mark up maybe 0 0.1 0 0.2 percent on your bond and sell it to you at a higher price mm. so that's why you always recommend that uh 
we have the mindset to buy the bond until maturity lah, until the com- com- completion of the tenor lah. Uh, so we uh, don't have to frequently trade the bonds. Yep, yep. Unless you are betting on interest rate uh, changes, then you can actually buy in government bond to bet on it. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, the next question is, what happened when the bond default? Uh? Uh, just like, my slide just now, okay. Uh, it will the, the first thing they will actually uh if it's go to default already, it will not straight away go into bankruptcy procedure. Okay, so it will actually try to restructure the uh the company to see whether they will be managed to get a favorable terms, try to negotiate between the equity holders and bond holders, try to get some favorable terms from both sides that willing to agree on the restructuring so if yes the company can still survive and go on but in the sense they will need to restructure the bond so for example for example if they don't have to don't have the money to repay you 100 percent of what you invested right away this year okay they may have restructured the bond into a new five-year bond perhaps they will just pay you 50 percent and the remaining 50 percent uh it will be spread out to an a, a new bond that is that's maturing in another five years time and you will be getting the remaining 50% of your investment by the end of the fifth year. But you can also sell it in the secondary market. Yeah. So it depends on the restructuring process, whether it can go through or not. If not, totally cannot restructure, then they will just sell off all the assets and what's the leftover, then they will give it to the bondholder first. Mm, okay. Uh, let's just do the last question. Yeah. Uh, Ben Kwan would like to ask, can you walk through us about duration and convexity of bonds? Oh, the, the one is too technical already. I don't think for basic or beginner bond class, we will need to touch on the one, but I can still share with you some of the uh, basic. Okay, okay. So normally, if we are looking at bonds, we will need to know when is it uh, gonna like mature. Okay, so uh, the duration is actually quite similar to the tenor of the bonds. Ah, okay? It will be quite similar. Okay, In the layman term, it is quite similar. For example, if the bonds still have 10 years left uh, remaining on the, on the 10 years, okay? so the duration is normally 9 point something okay? that is quite close to 10 years. On, okay? It means that for you will, as an investor, you will need to take 9 point something years to actually get back your whole investment. To get back your principal and the coupon, Okay, you need to take this duration to get back your to get back your investment okay so when the as an investor when, when we are actually looking at the duration okay when we are looking at duration it means that we want to know okay it's quite applicable for bond funds one because you will actually if you look at the fund tax sheet you will actually see that the fund manager will actually show you the fund manager will actually show you the average duration of the bond fund is how many percent okay so if for example if you see that the bond is having a 10 duration, a 10 years duration, or uh, average duration of the bond fund is 10 years, I can tell you uh, the, the direct relationship, you, you, you can actually interpret in this way. Okay, you can interpret in this way. Every 1% changes in the interest rate, it will translate to a 10% changes in the bond price in the inverse direction. Okay, if the bond... Uh, if the interest rate go down by 1%, a 10 years duration, it means that the bond price will go up by 10. Okay, this is the normal normal uh, uh, relationship that we will actually use to explain on the, uh, on, on, on the duration part. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I learned that uh, bond investment in bond is better if it's going to be in a declining interest rate environment. Uh. Yeah, uh, just to share with you, la, personally, I just to share with you all. La, so personally, uh, in the previous days, uh, I remember two years back uh, when our OPR rate are still at 3.0, 3.25 at the time, right? I actually did speculate on government bonds, uh, whereby I go and buy the longer tenure bonds, uh, like 20 years, 30 years MGS. And once the bank Nagara, uh, they are having that kind of signal, they are signaling the market, hey, I'm actually looking at reducing the interest rate. Okay, so once they 
move and reduce the interest rate. Uh, for example, just a 0.5% interest rate deduction uh, on the OPR. You, 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 if you are buying and holding a 30 years duration bond, uh, it means that uh, it will be 0.5% times a 30. Okay, so your bond will move in another direction for 15%. So it will be a good way for you to trade and uh, speculate on bonds also. Yeah. 15%. But you need to have a good macro understanding on the on the market, lah, I would say in that sense. 15% uh, you say? Ah, I actually uh, got 15% with, within a, a, a week. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite 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 lucrative return uh, for investing yeah. in bonds just by uh half a, a 50 basis point adjustment in interest rate. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Anson, for sharing with us a great deal about bonds. Yeah, I, I think many of us here have learned uh, a, a lot more about bonds. Yes or no? Okay, if yes, right, maybe you type one uh, in the chat group so we know that you have gained a lot from this session. Okay, yeah, not only Anson is an expert in bond, uh, but he is also uh, 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 an expert in stock also, okay? <laughs> All right, so just that today he talks about bonds. All right. So thank you so much, Anson, for this uh, very engaging session talking about exchange traded bonds and so good. How can we build a balanced portfolio? So if those of you who have not had bonds in your portfolio, uh, maybe you should consider to have some so that you know you can stabilize your portfolio return and then make sure that uh, your portfolio can uh, generate consistent return year after year. All right. Thank you so much, Anson. No problem. Thank you, everyone. Okay, let me tell you more about our next webinar. Okay, but before I talk next webinar, this is Bruce I can read. I think I mentioned many times already, but still I, I need to talk about this. So it is a comprehensive one-stop e-learning platform that aims to provide investors with a continuous and holistic learning journey. So it's very simplified, user-friendly, and also accessible anywhere, anytime. So just go to www.bruceacademy.com. So for our next webinar, it's going to be on uh, this Topic which is So for this, you know that it will be conducted in Mandarin. So it's happening on next Monday, which is uh 23rd of August 2021. So 8:30 to 10 o'clock. So I've given you the registration link in the chat group and also in the Facebook, uh sorry, not Facebook, YouTube <laughs> live chat. So you may uh, register for it if you want to learn how do you find trading timing using price action signal. Okay, for how do you look at how do you look at price action to determine what uh, when to buy and when to sell? All right, so this is the topic that will be conducted in Mandarin. So thank you so much, Anson, for sharing with us about exchange rate bonds and so good. How do we build a balanced portfolio in it? So yeah, for the, all of you here who have joined in this session, I hope that you have walked away with an enormous value from this webinar. So we'll see you again on next Monday. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Uh, who is the speaker? The next speaker is Ken Chow, Zhou Guoping Lao Si. For the next webinar.